everybody. This is a, a, a separate, different kind of episode of Comic Point. Uh, we are going to reschedule the talk of Ironheart and Bitterroot for a different day. But uh, we got we got your nerd here, and we're going to talk about something, uh, something near and kind of dear to our hearts. We're going to talk about the Peacemaker TV show. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going, your nerd? <laughs> it's going good for me. How about you, bruh? Like you know, we we just talked about this like behind the scenes and. Uh, I was excited when we first said talk about Peacemaker. But like now that I think about it, like the more I think about it, the more like mm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk about it. I am, I'm still excited to talk about Peacemaker. What do, what do you What do you want to start? Since you Since you like you got the excitement going, on, where do you want to start with this? All right, let's start with I'm gonna just start my rating of Peacemaker. How about Please, that? Let's, let's just do start that. There. Rating out of ten, I give it a solid six. And, the, and, and see, that's coming from me as a person who came into it thinking it was going to be trash. Yeah. I thought it was going to be ass. Yeah. So I so it, it being a six actually is pretty good. I mean, I still didn't. I still. It's like. It's spoilers. Like it has, tons, tons of spoilers. Let's get the spoiler. The spoiler oh, yeah. gate already out of the way. We're just going to be spoilers. spoilers. Yeah. It's, it's like it has moments where like it's funny as shit. Yeah, like it has moments where it's hilarious, mm-hmm. like you'd be dying. Then it has moments where it's just like, okay, bro, super ass sus. Get with the joke, like this is kind of just whatever. And I mean, it's the action, some of the action was pretty cool, like, but for the most part, since it's like really a comedy for like the story, I like the story. The story was, I'm, I'm with that. I like how it had the butterflies and they had that big ass cow. They was sucking. This set up, yeah. <laughs> like that shit was funny as fuck. Like when they had the cow, like and it was like uh, attached to whatever that thing it was attached to, mm-hmm. bro. Like that was hilarious. Like just looking at it, like. To go back to your point about the jokes, though. Like I feel like they they drove those jokes a little too hard sometimes. Like it was like, all right, like we got it. Like move on. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like. It was, it was, and John Cena actually did okay. John Cena actually did okay. I, I like John Cena in it. He his acting was okay. You know, it wasn't groundbreaking or nothing, but it was, it was cool. It was cool. It was not. No. It was cool. Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. How do you feel about the last? You know, the very last scene with the Justice League. How you feel? How you feel? I knew you were gonna bring that shit up. I knew you were gonna bring it up to me. I felt like if you watched a TikTok tonight, I know you did. And like, uh, yeah, uh, the Justice League showing up with the like with the fish sex joke, like like DC, like monitor your shows better, guys. Come on, like seriously, are you are you serious with this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, the joke. I was just like, bro, you didn't really need that, but it's peacemaker. And it, I'm just tripping off the people that's mad. Like, it ruined Aquaman. Oh, like, on, no, it stop. didn't, bro. It didn't. Aquaman is still fire. He's still a badass. Yeah. You feel me? But, like, yeah. It was just ridiculous. For, yeah. Like, for no dumbass reason. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, he was saying weird shit about the whole Justice League the entire show. But a Superman has a poop fetish. Yeah, like, that... <laughs> And of course, like you know, the Harley Quinn joke that Batman has sex with bats. Yeah, Batman fucks bats. Yeah. 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 Ridiculous. That like, but then, but yeah, it was it was Peacemaker was okay. It was, it was. It, yeah, it was okay. What about that? What about that one line that everyone like that made the show really blow up? Like that big rant he did about disliking Batman. What do you think about that? I thought that was kind of funny because some some of the shit he was saying, it was shit that people say online yeah like, you feel me like it was basically shit it was basically seems like they was they tuned into like what people say online and basically just put that in his rant and it, i mean it's funny because it's it's peacemaker you can't really take nothing he says seriously he just no. saying shit like he just <laughs> saying whatever you feel me but like yeah i ain't have a problem with some of his jokes i mean they just wasn't too funny most of them they got they got kind of racist in that show. They got racist, got a little got homophobic it, it, inside it, that show. But it was definitely cool when when Vigilante went into the jail and beat up all the white people. That yes. shit was that shit yes. was, yeah. That that's one of the parts in the show I'm really like that part had me dying when he was talking to them, bro. I was <laughs> just dying. owning owning every single one of them, dude. And like huh. I did like the fact that Vigilante was like the woke white friend of this yeah. whole show. I love that. 
bro, that had me dying. That scene, like, I had to stop it because I was tripping. I was tripping. Like, when they started fighting this shit, I was like, shit, I got, I want to see this. But I was dying when he was talking to him, yo. Bro, that part, left and right. that part is what got it to six. That got it to six, you feel me? Because so it, was, it was a five before this, what you told me. Yeah, it was a five. It was five. <laughs> also, also the scene where Peacemaker had to switch up saying something. He had to switch up saying something because he was like politically incorrect. And then uh uh the girl, uh Amanda Wallace's daughter, basically was like, um, basically was like, Oh my god, I feel so bad for the white man that has to that has to substitute one word that must be torture like that part was hilarious bro because that'd be stuff that's something that i would say when i see something dumb on the internet exactly. and I, that's something i would say and that drum was hilarious that those two scenes made it to six I, I i will say like like after like hearing you say that like it it did redeem itself certain times when it went too far in certain areas and i think that's why i kept watching the show because like when they did say some stupid like all all landishly stupid that they shouldn't have said they brought it back with scenes like that like that that right. kept me watching the show right exactly and i love the butterflies bro that yeah. joint is dope like having a butterfly basically invading and it's like this secret kind of invasion and then that's kind of because something like this is what suicide squad and like what they're made for. Yeah. is what they're for you feel mm-hmm. me I, so those parts kept me into the show. I just, as a whole, the show just didn't hit for me. Like it had elements. It had all the elements for me to be in there, but not enough to be like, yeah, I'm gonna go watch this joint again. You feel do you me? Have, do you have a favorite character? Favorite character, um, Heart Hardcore. Yeah, she was dope, but I don't. Hmm, it's between her and Visual Annie. Okay. Visual and I like the way you said that. Visual anti, yeah. Visual. I like him. Yeah, I like him because he's not like his comic book character, and I really not at all. That, yeah, <laughs> not even not a little all. bit. So I think James Gunn. I think that's his thing. I think because he kind of did that with Guardians of the Galaxy with Marvel. Mm-hmm. Like, I think he wants to take lesser known characters so he can do what he want with them without people getting mad. You right. feel me? Because Star Lord, Star Lord from the movie is nothing like Star Lord from the comics. Nothing. Right. Of them. And who's gonna get mad? Because don't nobody really read Gardens of Galaxy really. comics, and don't nobody know about Vigilante. This is probably mm-hmm. the people first time ever hearing about Vigilante. Crazy so, enough, yeah. I mean, I mean, there are Vigilante fans out there. I mean, couple you know, of them, I couple mean, of know, them, right, I'm yeah. just, right here, just one of them, right? Yeah. But like, for the most part, he's not a super popular character, and I mm-hmm. think that's James Gunn's thing. Like, so he can take characters that aren't popular and basically do what he want with them without anybody getting mad. And I mean. You feel uh, me? He's working so far for him. How about uh, the fact that he used um, the one creator who created Peacemaker, so using like all his characters inside the show? Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, I'm trying to find like the creator's name right now. Give me one second to the the IMDb this up. I think it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's Joe Gill. Joe okay. Gill created like created Peacemaker. He created uh, Judo Master. Right, he, Judo he, Master. Okay, Judo Master also. Is, no, no, no. That's my favorite character. <laughs> Judo, Judo Master. Master is my favorite. Yo, when I'm sorry, when he was crying at the end and he was eating like the Cheetos, I was dying. Yo, <laughs> I was dying. He's so small. He's so uh, small. Like, what was Judo Master a butterfly though? Or was he just like, like a loyalist to those guys? Well, I like, think Judo Master just was Judo Master. Like, he was just himself. Like, he was <laughs> he was just out there. No, yeah, because they hired him because they, they convinced him to work for them. Right. And then he just worked for them. Like, and he was just whipping people's ass. Like, like hardcore, dude. Yeah. Yo, you, yo, he got to be annoying as hell to fight, bro, because he little as hell and he just got quick hands. Like, you, and then he just don't go down. Like, He's a badass, to say the least. Yeah, he <laughs> no, he, he, he sold his show a few times for me. He did every scene he was in, bro. Mm-hmm. When when he had Peacemaker tied up and he was just hitting them with shit, <laughs> and like he just kept he just kept on coming back for more too, dude. Like, dude, who is this guy? Like, if I, if I rewatch it, it would be for Judo Master. Like that that no. is no lie right there. I will watch a Judo Master show. I'm not even gonna hold you. I will watch it in a second. 
Yo. I got to tell you, Mern. Mern was the one that, that stole it. Mern, that's the yo with the glasses? Uh, that's the older older dude. Like, he's like the one who had the butterfly inside of him. The, the black, black dude. guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The the butterfly that, that betrayed his people and shit. Dude, yeah. I, I, I think his acting, like, carried the story. Like, I, I, I really do. I think, like, his it acting, did. like, like um, Joss Cena was good. Uh, Patrick, uh, Robert Patrick was good. Like, Daniel Brooks. Like all, all these what's actors. My girl's, what's my girl's name from Orange is New Black? I'm so mad. That, I that's, can't that's, Daniel, that's Daniel Brooks. She played. Uh, Say it again. Uh, Daniel Brooks. She played. Danielle Brooks. There Adi, Adi Bayo. Yeah. Yeah. It's Amanda Wilder's daughter. Mm-hmm. That's tough. And like, and she was good. Like she, like her, she played wall off of John Cena. Like they both play wall off each other. Even no, uh, their, their scenes together, I liked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I and, like them together. Jennifer Holland, who played Harcourt, who is like surprisingly now engaged to James Gunn. I don't know how that. Yeah, don't yeah, know how that happened. Yeah, yeah, I just seen that today. Like today, I just seen that. Don't don't know how that happened, but whatever. I guess like congratulations to you too. Good on them, bro. Good on them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, like Fight definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. It's hilarious. But uh, Murr was the one that did it for me, dude. You feel fucking you. <laughs> Mer was the one who saw that for me. <laughs> yeah, Mer, yeah. Sorry, my bad. I gotta get back no, on track. Don't back worry about track. it. Don't worry. About it. I'm not gonna edit any of this. So you're good. <laughs> that, that is gonna stay in there, my friend. <laughs> Hilarious. But yeah, Mer. Yo, I'm mad that he's dead, though. Yeah. Like I'm mad that he's dead because. He was like he. I would love for him because they're doing a season two, so I would love for him to be in season two, you know. But not he not. Damn. And like he he, he was like the the good the, the perfect kind of straight man because like he would hop in at the last minute and throw like his own version of those stupid ass jokes that they were doing, and like it would hit every single time. And I love it. Yeah. Yo, he was good. Yo, I'm yo, I'm mad he's dead. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was hit pretty hard. But like, even like Hardcore's character was hit that Mern had died also. Like, and like, you know that that was that was unexpected. Like when 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 Hardcore got hit, that like Mern character had died. Like that that was not something I was gonna. I didn't I didn't see that coming. I didn't see mm-hmm. that she had such an attachment to that character that she felt a certain way when he died. Like that right. that that was good writing in my eyes. Yeah. I think also this show, one thing about this show as a a whole, like, even though it's it didn't fully do it for me, one thing I like about it is that it's so different. You know, mm-hmm. it's like it's on the level of like Doom Patrol. Yes. But like, but it's different. You feel me? Like it's it's a nice for I mean, people love it. People it's, love it. It didn't really do it for me, but people love it. It's like Doom Patrol and Harley Quinn meshed together. Yes. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. Because, like, even like with, like with the dramatic scenes, like in the beginning, where you saw Peacemaker trying, like, you know, move on from the fact that he he can't kill people, or like, you know, him killing uh, Flag, like, and to like the to like all like the weird campy jokes that Vigilante mostly started. Mm-hmm. It was uh, it yeah, and you can definitely see like 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 the drama of Doom Patrol and the comedy of Harley Quinn in that show. Like, that's definitely. why it blends so well. That's that's a very that's, yeah. Yeah, but it had its own little pocket, like it was its own little thing. So that's what I like about it. It was kind of it was different. It didn't do it for me, but it was still different. Like it's not the same run of the mill shit. You feel me? Like no. it's something different, you know. And it was interesting enough to watch the whole season. It was. Yeah. Uh, I, I. How about this? Like, uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about this, and we'll move it on to like, to like the, the next category we're going to talk about in this uh, review, but. Uh, what do you want from season two? Mm. Yeah, tough one, right? I want, hmm, I want him to continue. If James Gunn's going to do this, I want him to continue with uh, unpopular characters, not well-known characters. I want him to continue with that, but I want it to be more so. So with him, with Peacemaker kind of out in the Suicide Squad, mm-hmm. Like, so I guess it would kind of be more so him doing his own thing, freelancing, I guess. Is he still with them? Like, because so, they kind of ruined it for themselves towards the end. At least I think so. Like, they, they ruined yeah. the franchise. 
So for me, for me, I would kind of like it to be like more so an anthology type of thing where like he comes in, he's on missions and each episode is kind of a different mission, but you know, it's like a big bad looming throughout the missions. You feel me? Like that would really hit it for me. I think that that way they can bring in different type of characters, you know, and then also, I guess, continue with the humor of it all. You feel me? I, I, I get I get what you're saying. I, I would probably say do like mini arcs like we have in comics, like uh, right, three, ep- exactly. three episodes, a certain thing, another three episodes, something else is happening. But uh, it revolves around like, the, the supporting character. Like you can get Captain Boomerang from the movie to show up. I think Boomerang. Died. No, he's dead. So, yeah, yeah, he's dead. Boomerang yeah, he died. That's right. <laughs> DC's, DC's really fucking themselves over, man. Jesus. They can't have nothing nice. But that's what I'm saying. There's still a slew of unknown characters there that is. he can use. True. That he can just put in there. You feel me? I'm hoping for Bronze Tiger. Yeah. I was talking about Catman before. Like, I want to see Catman actually with Bronze Tiger. Like, Michael, I'm pretty Michael, Jai, Michael Jai White from an alternate universe wouldn't mind getting himself thrown inside there. And I'll be yeah, because he was Bronze it. Tiger on the CW. Mm-hmm. Get him back. I don't care if he was on the CW. Get just, him back. Just open a, a multiverse portal. Like do the Doctor Strange thing. No, forget that. Don't do that. Don't bring the CW version. (laughs) No, because it's CW. We just need a whole new version. (laughs) Unless, unless, unless you go on Jamie Foxx it. You seen Spider Man, right? No, no, I haven't. Oh, go keep going. I don't mind. I mean, yeah, Jamie Foxx. They gave Jamie Foxx like a whole new makeover since he came over from the other universe. So like. If they go on Jamie Foxx, like somehow do a whole new makeover from the CW universe, I'm with that. But so alter this character a little bit, is what you're saying? Yeah, because I okay. just can't take CW. CW just needs to stay where it's at. I mean, it, it's working for him. So like, you know, keep doing what you're doing, but like, like keep that, CW. keep it. <laughs> I mean, the fans like it. <laughs> it's keeping it keeping money in DC's pocket. I'll say that much. I guess, man. I'm tired of it. Yo, put all the series on HBO Max. I'm tired of CW. I'm tired of it. That. I'm tired of it. Like HBO Max. It's like it's the way to go. Like 100 percent Like what uh, you got it for. <clears throat> I mean, I, I got HBO Max so I can watch like the movies mostly. Like the movies yeah. and like rewatch uh the DC shows that, that came out back it, in the two thousands. That shit, yo, that's what I'm saying. DC, you got all this stuff in the HBO Max and y'all want to drive HBO, HBO Max submissions. Just put all your stuff dead. Make shows on there with the budget of like, you know, Titans and Peacemaker. Um, Definitely Peacemaker because they gave them money because that yeah, CGI for that to. pal was good. They had to. They had to give them like a pretty big budget. Yeah. Yo, they did. Yo, and then the butterflies, all the CGI mm-hmm. at that joint was tough. Crisp. Yeah, so... Forget CW. <laughs> Come over to HBO Max. You feel me? Kick, kick that shit out of here. You guys didn't yes. see it, but I did, I did a kick motion. But <laughs> kick that shit out of here. And make sure you put everything on HBO Max. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm with that. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind seeing more um, like superhero s type characters. Like superheroes that can fly, superheroes that have like powers. Like, I wouldn't right. want to see, like, more of that. Because, like, since, like, the world is so expansive and, like, you know, it's not only just, like, the, the Justice League and Aquaman. Like, you also got the the first Suicide Squad. You also got the Birds of Prey. You also got yeah, Shazam. Yeah, humans. Like, you got, you got that world. Like, and they tell you that world is, like, there. And they, like, people have powers and whatnot. Like, let's, let's see these other characters before this Flashpoint movie comes out. And, like, let's, let's see, like, what kind of fun they can have with all this stuff before... It comes out like i just i just want to like just go wacky like you guys got a whole reboot movie that you're about to make just go nuts right right i would love for more meta humans too like you know what's the place that's always experiment it's called like geneva um somewhere like cadmus huh you like cadmus or star lab cadmus, they one of the people but it's it's a place where it's like it was in the outsiders it was in a it's in a lot of things but i can never remember the name it was in the Young Justice Outsiders, you know, like people. The Hive? Like, there are another people. You mentioned all the people that do do this, except for the people I'm thinking about. The the, the butter, butter Blood? No, you keep mentioning everybody, but these are good people. 
<laughs> are these the good people that do experiments on people? Is that what you're talking about? These are good people that you're saying because this they fit the category. <laughs> oh, that's about. what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> well, I know it's that Star Labs. Like that one. That one's for sure. Is that like one? No, of it's like a, it's like it's in run. It's called like Genova, Geneva. It was in you. Do you remember the Young Justice season? Oh, um, oh. Outsiders? And it's like overseas, and they're always making like metahumans and shit. I remember, I remember for like the TV show that's been on. Like I keep thinking, like you, I keep thinking you kind of want to go towards the X band and go like you know uh, Genosha, but like that can't be it. it. No, that's not it. That's that's see, I that's, think that's Marvel. That's up with that. Yeah, yeah. it's oh, <laughs> I don't, that I that I don't remember from uh, from Young Justice. Let's see, Young Justice experiments. This is, Never uh, mind. We're just gonna go with all the three people that you said because <laughs> they still fit. They still fit. I mean, it works, right? <laughs> it works. It works totally. You can use any of them, like, like, literally, like, and like, they, they have like different reason and rationale that, like, as to why they can work for all those things. So, yeah, no, I get exactly. it. Exactly. That would be tough. But uh, that is, I think that's 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 our entire take on all this. No, no. Oh, keep... before you, before you, uh, before we go to the next subject, you gotta give your rating to Peacemaker. Oh, I didn't do out that. Of 10. Did I? If, if it wasn't for the theme song, it would probably be like a six like you two, but that opening thing gives it a seven. Like, it's, it's so okay. wacky and ridiculous. That, uh, okay. Uh, Ruta, Rutabaga. Project Rutabaga? Is that what it is? Is that what it's called? I don't really think so. Mm. I think that that's what Clarion called it, was Project Rutabaga. I'm not sure. What? But, uh, I, I give I give it a seven, definitely. Okay, smooth seven. Yeah. Okay. I know, and like I, I don't really like James Gunn, as I said before. Like you know, that, that, that shit that got him uh, kicked out of Marvel <clears throat> and out of Marvel for a couple of years. I was I was here for it because that he did like some weird shit, like some shit yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna I repeat. I heard about that. I heard about that. No, so, no, thank you. But uh, <laughs> I think it's Cadmus. I'm reading an article. It says it's Cadmus. Yeah, I, it's but it's something. It was overseas, like Russia or something. They was experimenting on metahumans. Markovia. But, but thank you, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. There we go. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I was going on Genosha. And they can bring it back, and like like the Young Justice fans like recognize that name. So yeah, that'd be a good way to go. I like I like how you're thinking, man. Like keeping it keeping it a little center, but spread out at the same time. Hmm. Right. Yeah, you I can like you can you can go into different pockets of the DC universe mm-hmm. with shows like this. And and a real cool thing about like even though like, they outed themselves at the end of the season, like DC has so many like Omega level like bad guys who are also telepaths. Like they can just like they don't have to do like the whole Doctor Strange thing. They can just use one of those guys and just you know like it's gone, it's out. A lot of people's heads. Right. It's interesting. I like that. It is. But but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna come back. We're going to talk about something big. All right, all right. We are back talking about some more hype news. Um, this is, I think it comes out in like, what, a week and a half? Is it? Is yep, that when yep. it comes out? It comes out in a week, a week from Friday. Then what we're talking about is, uh, is the Batman movie. The Batman. Yes. Right. Let's see, get, a, get an exact date. March 4th. It's the date that comes out, directed by Matt Reeves and uh, has Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, uh, Paul Dano, Jeffrey Wright, John Turturro, uh, Peter Skarsgård, Andy Serkis, and Colin Farrell. It's a big ass cast, a lot of big names too. Good ass cast. Yeah, now that that Paul Dino, like who does a Riddler? I don't know about you, but like I. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna like say what I was gonna say because like the entire cast. Like I'm really excited to see. But like, like the but Riddler. Not, like no, no, like he he's like he's like top of the list. But like I really want to see what Kravis does with Catwoman. Like I know I know Pattinson's like been busting his ass for this Batman role because like no one goes into a Batman role unless like you're George Clooney and not take it serious. You know what I mean? Yeah, I said that. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that's the is that the bat nipples right that's the bat that's nipples. the one that's the one 
You know, you know, like no, no one goes. <laughs> you fucking died. <laughs> no one goes. No one yeah. goes into a Batman role and not take it serious. Like you know, unless you're George Clooney. George Clooney did not take that role serious. No, I don't, you cannot convince me otherwise. He did not take that role serious. He couldn't have. He like, couldn't have. No, like I'm like you got dude. Like, you got nipples on the bat suit. Like are you like I got like a Batman MS card. Like stop. Like seriously. <laughs> Like, like, knock it off. Like, seriously. Like, just Bane. Bane was like, <sighs> oh my. I, I think Bane was like, like on the spectrum. Like, you know, no shade to him. But like, I don't know what was going on with like with that Bane character, but he should not. They should not Bane, have gone that direction. That was the worst Bane. That I was awful. In life. That like, like Poison Ivy didn't know she wanted to be hedonistic or she wanted I to like be a Poison damsel. I, I like Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy. She was the only highlight of that movie for me. The rest of the movies, I think her point Ivy is tough. She was just in a horrible movie. Agreed. I give you that. But like, you know, like that. That drug was entertaining. And uh last last but not least, uh Mr. Freeze in that film. You can't even look at you should, you guys should see his face right now. <laughs> he, he looks he looks oh, disgusted he and then he laughs. He said, he said, he said, what killed the dinosaurs? The ice the age. Ice age. <laughs> 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 hey, bad boy, freeze. <laughs> okay, I take it back. Uma Thurman was not the only highlight of that movie. La- freeze, laughing at him? Yeah. <laughs> the puns? Oh, my God. No, my. On whoever decided they wanted Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze, yo, they need an award for something. They, but they, yo, that, that was a, that was probably, that they was just like, you know what? That might be nice. You'll probably <laughs> be just like, you know what would be funny? Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze. And he was like, you got us. All right, everybody, chill. <laughs> Allow me to break the ice. <laughs> Tonight, yeah. hell freezes over. <laughs> I'm reading, I found a list of all the puns. Yeah. Tonight. <laughs> Tonight forecast, a freeze is coming. <laughs> he <laughs> really said all these in one movie. One ridiculous. movie. The Iceman cometh. <laughs> Over in one movie. You're oh, not sending that. me to the cooler. <laughs> forget, forget that. Forget that. We got to talk about the other bad man. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. You're right. We got off track. Like <laughs> The movie's a joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is. The movie's a joke. <laughs> All that in one movie. But you're right. We're talking about the Batman. Have you watched a trailer for the Batman? Yes. Every trailer, everything. Everything. Damn. All you, the you pictures. You hard press about this shit. Everything. It's Batman, bro. It's Batman. And they this movie, they say, is basically takes inspiration from the long Halloween, which mm-hmm. is one of my favorite Batman. Uh, it's one of my favorite comics, period. Bro. Period. So like Nolan Nolan tried to put some of the long Halloween inside of his films. Like he, he did some of that with the Batman Begins. No, he definitely did. No, no, mm-hmm. actually he hundred percent did. Um the mobster, yeah. California. Uh, actually, yeah, because it was once I wanted to make a whole video about how how it took some of how uh Nolan's took some of uh what I found in like the long Halloween, but I never did that shit. You should, man. I'm all for it. Like I appreciate your fans are there for it too, definitely. I'm definitely going to do that again. But yeah, so the, this one is basically after a long Halloween. And mm-hmm. it's like, they said it's like a detective type story with the Riddler, bro. Yeah. So how can you not want that? With the penguin? Have and you like, seen, the, you seen the face that Feral did for this movie? That doesn't even look like him. Oh, no, it bro, doesn't. Somebody has to get in the war for makeup. Somebody has to get in the war for makeup. I don't disagree with you. And Jeffrey Wright is playing Gordon. And like, I love it. <laughs> there is this one scene that like I keep saying floating around where Batman punches uh, yeah. Gordon and he runs away there's like a sound effect afterwards. yes yes I seen that jo- <laughs> that joy had me die he just stole them real quick <laughs> and then like the, the Batman from the 60s uh, music comes on in the background like you know what I'm here for it I don't even care the like, <laughs> yo that was hilarious that was hilarious, bro. But uh, everything about this movie just looks fantastic. It does. Like all the just 
the steals from the movie, mm-hmm. every scene in the trailer looks fantastic. The roughness of Batman. Batman, like, he, he takes no no nothing Bro. from nobody. He looks like he, no. will, he will put you in the dirt as fast as you say his name. Yeah. I'm going to say this right now with you. Okay. I said it to, like, probably only, like, a couple people. But I think this will be the best Batman movie we have ever gotten. I think this may be better than the Dark Knight. Say that, say that, say that one more time. I think this will be the best movie we ever got. I think this will be better than the Dark Knight. You can quote me on this. Uh, I'm posting it to Twitter, like right now. You like, can't. Uh, say, I'm good. I, say, I, I will, yo, I think this will be better. I love the Dark Knight. Don't get me wrong. It's top tier. It's probably either one or two top movies of all time, right? But just the way this looks with the Riddler, the characters, year one Batman, I'm telling you, bro, I think this is going to be better than The Dark Knight. And, like, I got to tell you, like, this is the movie that's probably going to get me to go to the theaters to see it. Like, I, I know I should have gone to see it when no way, no way Home came out, but that's an MCU film. I'm not, I'm not getting out of my house to go to a movie theater to watch an MCU film in a theater. Again, I've been disappointed far too many times. But uh, I understand. <clears throat> No, I understand, but if you go see any, that's the one. I think that's I, I think this has to be it. I got I got the four Batman tattoos. Like uh, I did, I was disappointed when I watched the Dark Knight Rises in theater because like it was a predictable story. The characters' motivation was not there for me. Uh, the story itself was not uh, cohesive to like like the previous movies. Like it just like Dark Knight Rises was a slump in my eyes. But uh, this movie right here. I'm not sure if I share your sentiment about it being the best Batman movie. But, I could uh, be tripping, but the way it look, it look fantastic. It does. I, it does. Like I, I can't, I can't deny that. Like I, everything, I, I everything I know about this movie, everything I hear about this movie, I just, it just pe- keeps. It's like piques my interest so much. Like I love the Dark Knight because it had the Joker and Heath Ledger killed the Joker, and that really drove that movie. Well, the whole movie was just fire, to be honest. But like the one thing that hold that stops that is that I don't like Christian Bale's Batman. Ooh. I think he was a good Bruce Wayne, but him wow. as Batman, even the voice. Like, no, I definitely don't like the voice. what. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I definitely didn't like the voice. I'm yo, Bro. I didn't like Christian Bale as Batman. Like, I think he did, he's a phenomenal actor and he did a great job as like Bruce Wayne. But like when he was Batman, and like also I think they didn't do a good job with the fight scenes for him. Like it's Batman, like his fight scenes were trash. Okay. I'll, I'll give you that. Like the, the shaky camera. Nolan does not know how to direct a fight scene. Like that, that yeah, I will like the, I'll hundred percent like, agree with you on that. Like the scenes where he was fighting in the dark, like that was tough. Like when he was like surprising people and everything, but when it was like hand to hand, this this was the camera the entire time. Yeah, like, this this was like the the uh, this the entire time this was the camera. Like yeah, right. And then when he was hand to hand, it just wasn't like good. But like I feel like the movies itself were just so fantastic that like it it overshadowed the fact that Christian Bale just wasn't that good of a Batman. Whatever. Well, at least to me. No, whatever. Like, at least to me. Mm, but you I just, think you just, killed his, you just killed his relationship. Killed it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Twilight is going to be better. <laughs> you think you think Pattinson is going to be better than? Ooh. I think my man's Twilight is going to be fire. <sighs> Yo, you you and that you're this is me. coming from a man that hates Twilight. Yo, you are you are hurting me right now. Like, I, I might be yo. These I, is bold predictions, but I'm willing to say it because this movie looks fantastic. I have no guff against Pattinson. Like uh, I actually can tolerate some of the Twilight movies. Not all of them. Some of them are just no, them convoluted. Was horrible. Some no, of them are convoluted as fuck. The story, the story just sometimes did not make any sense whatsoever. Never. But but uh, the acting like was it was it was where it was supposed to be, which was dry and dull. And those 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 actors <laughs> captured the characters very well. <laughs> right. Very well. Very well. And uh, I did like uh, Bad Santa and Tenet, even though like you know the story of Tenet was also kind of. <laughs> Uh, watch it 
watch it with your with your brain completely open because like it is it is a <laughs> it's a hard chew, man. Like they they go into like a lot of like 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 thesis that will <sighs> like you got a lot to digest when you watch this. So like it may take a two time around. Just saying, okay. but uh, got some time on my hands. Yeah, <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. Right. But uh, from the trailers, though, I haven't really seen much of what Pattinson can do as Bruce Wayne or Batman. I just see like you know, like the angry grunge look that he has, and I just see like you know, him being bewildered and confused as Bruce Wayne. So like, I don't really know like what to expect from Pattinson. So like, right. I I can't. <clears throat> you just have a mad dislike for Bale as Batman, apparently. So, you know, I, I think you take a slice of cheese to be better than Christian Bale. <laughs> Yo, he played, a, he played a phenomenal Bruce Wayne. He played that half of the role great. He did. Just with the, I feel like they also didn't set him up. I, f- I mean, I don't, I don't, I feel like they, it's just, it just, he wasn't menacing enough for me. Like, it's Batman. Like, I feel dude, like I could take Bale. Swear to me. Are you kidding me? Whatever, dude. No, bro. No, I'm not. I'm not with it. I'm not. I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> Bo, uh, yo, yo. I just don't know. Well, uh, this is probably the last episode with your nerd. Just so, <laughs> just so you, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, I hear you though, dude. Like, uh, I'll, I'll hopefully we're, we're both like pleasantly surprised uh, when it comes to this movie. I, I want Patterson to be better than Christian Bell, like if I'm being completely honest, but I want anybody who takes the role after a previous person to be better than to be last better, person. Because so. the movie only gets better. Exactly. But I think just with the storyline, the cast you have, mm-hmm. just like the characters and any, like we haven't even seen much of uh, Fal- Falcone. Fal- am I saying Falcone? It? Yeah, yeah. We haven't mm-hmm. even seen much of him. And then um, this, the, every, and then my man's is Alfred. My man's that. Circus. That, is that his name? The man and, that plays and, Andy Circus? Yeah, yeah, that's his name. Because he be he's always in like them like uh visual effects roles and he always worked with Matt Reeves. But like him is Alfred. I'm 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 he's gonna yo, be a badass. Like you can they never have some pick guff. a bad yeah, yo, I yeah. can see it. He's gonna have some guff to him, definitely. Yeah. He's gonna be the Alfred that trained. I wouldn't be surprised if we get an Alfred fight scene. Uh huh. Finger, fingers crossed on that. Yo, we we haven't gotten something like that mm. yet, bro. I want to see Alfred fight scene. Cause like they they've been hyping that that Pennyworth show, which is now on HBO Max. I gotta I, catch up. I definitely got. Catch- I, I watched the first two episodes. They was they was cool. They was nothing spectacular. It got picked but, up for another season. It was on Epics, so like I gotta give it some respect in that regard. If you got picked up for another season and he was on Epics, yeah, you. De- I, I mean, I, you must be good. It has to be something that's going on with it, right? Exactly. Right. So, right. but like we, we we can't like we can't finish this show off without talking about Zoe Kravitz. Like it would be rude for us not like to to bring her up as Catwoman. Like and like, dude, <laughs> you okay over there? Whoever <laughs> casted that also needs an award. Bro, he's like losing his mind. <laughs> Bro, when I heard she was cast, I was like, yo, number one, the streets is going to be mad. Yep. They're going to be mad. Let them. Gonna, all the white people going to be mad, but let, let them. them be mad. Let them. <laughs> let them. Let them. <laughs> let them. You feel me? This is perfect. And then, it, yo, and then, then the scenes together in the mm. trailer. What, what, <sighs> you, what you said about the... Uh, uh, Passing being like that, being better than um than um the previous Batman. You think she's gonna be better? I I think she's gonna be better than Hathaway and Pfeiffer combined. Like she has like the sultriness about her. She has like this independence about her. She has like this establishment about herself. Like she doesn't need any help. She doesn't want to tell any sob stories. She just want to like do what she has to do. I already know what I'm doing. I find you attractive. Like like hey, you want to do some stuff. Like that's behind the scenes. Let's fucking let's do some of that. And like you know, <laughs> let's get our job done. I feel like like that's that's the attitude that she's bringing to this character. It's not like you know like oh my goodness, my boss hated me and now I'm Catwoman. Like oh my goodness, like I still stuff because I'm poor. And like uh, I was adopted and bounced around from place to place. It's not like something like that. It's like she knows who she is. Exactly, she knows exactly who she is. She doesn't need anyone in a bat costume to save her. But she wouldn't mind rocking with him a couple of times right. because like she likes what he's doing. So you know what I mean? Right. Like I feel that in this in that in that trailer from her. Question though, who do you think was the better Catwoman, 
Pfeiffer or Hathaway? Uh, Hathaway. It's, it's, a, that's, it's a tough call because Pfeiffer brought something like she brought like a, a complete character change like in one movie and like that's that's some good acting right there like her character was timid she was uh, submissive she did not have an intention to detail to herself and like she completely flipped the script and like was a hardcore baddie like hardcore but Hathaway Hathaway was smart she was sleek but like then like she got like recluse towards the end and like you know just let some dude buy stuff for her. like a you know, like a, that that, that kind of feels like Catwoman but like I just it just kind of fizzled out towards the like the end of the movie for him so they both kind of like switched gears in the film but uh if I like just like pick off like like which one lasts longer in my mind it would have to be Pfeiffer yes <laughs> Hathaway was good, but like I think five was, was good. Better. Yeah, Hathaway was good. Yeah, we not saying that she was not bad. She was good, but five. That's my joint. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. And I think I do. I agree with you. I think Zoe could be better. I think she like I really like. I said I think this movie will be like at least for me like a definitive, definitive Batman yeah. story. Like I think I'm gonna get the violence, the action I want, and I think I'm gonna get the detective side yeah. of it. And I'm gonna get like a torture, like Bruce Wayne going mm-hmm. through a year one, and a, and you know the the rogue, like the so far we got Riddler, Catwoman, and Penguin, like that's 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 just what we know. That's just what we know. What we know, we like, don't know who may make an appearance. We have no, we have we have literally no clue who else can pop. Into, like it can be like an origin of the bat, the man bat inside. It can be like a, a, a pan off to uh, the hole where Bane is kept. It can be blockbuster. It can be Deadshot. It can be anything at, at the end of this. So yeah. But and then the fact that they're using the Long Halloween, literally like every villain, every rogue is in inside of it. Exactly. Mad like, Hatter, like everybody. Scarecrow, Calendar Man, they all pop inside of this. Exactly. Yeah. So I feel like. The, like we don't know who may be in this who may have a connection in this story so i i'm excited i'm excited you know, like i'm hyped see now like see this is this is the whole point of doing this whole episode to get ourselves hyped for this like now at the end of it yeah yeah i'm a little hyped man <laughs> no, I'm, I, and it's like three hours long oh my god i can't wait y'all y'all know i usually usually shrug at long ass movies like this. Like I, I complained the entire time Marvel told us the the brothers, Russo brothers told us that this movie gonna be this long. I was like, mm, I don't know about any of that. Like that's a long ass time. You sit in the movie theater, but uh, <laughs> like <laughs> we visiting Gotham for three hours and like knowing that um, like, they, they got a GCPD TV show spinning off from this and Batgirl is gonna spin off from this. Like, okay. No, no, Batgirl is not going to spin off from this. Batgirl is connected to the DC universe. Oh, it's connected to DCEU? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the show, but they are, but they're doing a, the Gotham PD and a Penguin show. A Penguin that's show. basically going to be like a, like a, like a mob type show. And that's the one I'm really, yeah. bruh, Penguin is one of my favorite Batman characters. Like, why? He's just, huh? Why? Why? Because, like, his stories, bro, like, number one, Penguin has a very bad Napoleon syndrome that I love. Yeah. You fuck with him, he's going to hurt you. <laughs> like, like, he's going to. Like, you 100%. think he's small, but he's smart. He's smart, he has money, and he has resources mm-hmm. that can really mess with Batman. And he becomes mayor at, at one point. Like, he's basically like a king, like, he has, like, the mystique of Kingpin, but not the respect of Kingpin. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like in every DC story, also, no matter I I realized this one time. I think uh that when I realized this was after deceased, like uh when they did that, any any world ending event that happens in DC, Penguin has a uh, outpost, he has something he fortifies that, uh, like a shelter, yeah. like a fortress. Always. He always survives. Always. And like whenever 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 Gotham is in siege by something and like uh, people want to take over, the Penguin always lays claim for himself, no matter which story you're talking about. Yeah. Always. He's literally one of my favorite mm-hmm. Penguin stories. And one of my favorite stories about him is Pride and Pe- Prejudice, where it's, it, I think it was part of New 52. It was Penguin's point of view and Batman basically was the villain of this comic. And 
it was all from Penguin's point of view. He had like his girl and everything who I think was blind or some shit like that. Like it was a real kingpin s type of story, but with Penguin. And it's, it's, he's fire, bro. Like, and I can't wait to see what they do with that Penguin show. It's called uh, Pain and Prejudice. That's the name of it. Pain and Prejudice. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's New 52, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, that joint was tough. It looks, it looks pretty bad. Like, he like, got his own little Batman mech suit, it seems like. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, like, it's a part, like, it's literally Batman is seen, Batman's basically the villain because it's from Penguin's point of view. Like, the whole story is just from his point of view. Interesting. And this yeah, it's one of my favorite penguin stories. Actually, probably my favorite penguin. <clears throat> you think like you think they're gonna be catering to the um like if we're gonna talk about like the spinoff shows for a little bit, then do you think they're they're catering to like the the Gotham fans with the penguin and uh, the Gotham PD shows? Definitely. I think definitely yeah. what I think one thing Matt Reeves probably wanted to do, and it's cool that DC allowed allowed him to do, I think he wanted to make his own gotham universe yeah like like just keep it and then that bro for me that as a batman fan that is probably the best way to go about it like to keep these big movies for batman stories but like there's so much gotham itself is its own character it's his own character yeah it's his own character it is so like metropolis yeah yeah but i think even i think way more so than metropolis just because like gotham has gotham has so much like you know underground shit that happens uh corruption that happens yeah. police force corruption they uh more, more real life undertones attached to it to yeah. metropolis does. okay yeah because metropolis more <clears throat> so with more big scale stuff because it's in the sky heavy. flying mm-hmm. futuristic kind of yeah. yeah gotham is like really a city that is just corrupted to its core that all this stuff is can happen actually in the city so it's like them i think matt this is the best way for matt reeves to make like his own universe and with the Gotham PD that's going to show corruption in Gotham and yeah. then Penguin, the underworld and crime, like so much that can happen. And for those of you who don't know, uh, there was a comic book called GCPD that <clears throat> came out in DC. I think it was around the nineties. And this then is like, it is based off that. Yeah. Like and then they, from that. and they created a, another one that came out, uh, I think it was like in the, early 2000s was the GC, GCPD Central or is that the name of the TV show that I'm talking about <clears throat> uh, but like yeah it, it's based off that and like I'm with you man like I'm, I'm yeah Gotham Central is what it was called by, by Rucka and Brubaker yeah so they got yeah. they got like elements from that and if you guys haven't read those stories like they're they're fucking incredible. Like it's from like now, the perspective of the cops the entire time, but like all like the Batman shit is happening around him. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's literally gotten from a different perspective. Because most comics is literally from Batman's perspective, but it's literally from the PD and how that's mm-hmm. going down. It's if you a Batman fan and just a fan of Gotham in general, like those are definitely something you should pick up, especially before the the show comes out. Because yeah, that definitely it'll give you some insight to what's going on and all that. I got. I used to not do that. Like after I watched, as I read the the Watchmen before I watched the movie, like I felt like it uh, skewed my opinion towards that film because I didn't really, I didn't really like Snyder's Watchmen. I thought it was kind of bogus in my eyes. But uh, if 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 you do read these, uh, it is pretty vast. It is episodic, like issue wise, and like it may give you like a different perspective, not only on like this TV show that's coming up, but also like like the Batman universe because. Like, as I say to everybody, comics are politics. And, like, these stories are very political. Like, and very it, much I so. Mean, you're dealing with the Gotham Police Department. It has to be political. It has it, to it, be. It has to be. It's it's corruption. When you're dealing with corruption, you're just going to get political. You feel me? Like, it's, it's the, yeah. So, if you want them people, like, you know, I don't want to be on the politics, da, 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 don't pick these up. Don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it to yourself. <laughs> We Bro, you, to- you probably should be listening to this podcast. <laughs> right. <laughs> you not be here right now. Yeah. We glad uh, you are. Yeah, hey, welcome. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that I think that's it. Like uh, we talked about Zoe Crab, we talked about uh, all the different characters, uh, the Riddler, Penguin, uh, Gordon. I really thought, I honestly thought like it was gonna be Gordon's daughter from this movie that we were getting a Batgirl movie from. Considering you know 
Like she's Gordon. Black. Yeah, she's black. Cause like she's gonna be black in the she's but in Gordon's white. So yeah, I don't I we'll see how that works. I guess I mean, we will. I, I think the actress is mixed, right? Okay. So I could I guess I could work. I mean, I'm not don't quote me on it. I'm not hundred percent sure at all. I wonder I, I wonder if she's gonna be adopted like she was in the original series. Cause like originally Barbara Gordon was adopted by Jim. That could happen. That could happen. Hmm. Not many people know that. Like originally, like Bobby Gordon was like was an adopted daughter. Of, I actually did not know that myself. Yeah, and like it wasn't until like later on they retconned it, like to have her be like his blood daughter. Yeah. Okay. Crazy, right? Bruh, I mean <laughs> they could do that. They could do that just for that fact. Like, just for that, that fact. Started off like that, and then they could be like, you know, I want to bring that back. I like it. It could work. And then her father really be Bronze Tiger. <laughs> Ooh, oh my god, that fool! Oh my god. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> don't tip me. Don't, don't tip me with some awesomeness. <laughs> that wouldn't happen. That would not happen, but that would be tough. I think people would be mad as shit. And I think they I would know. be so mad if they did something like that. It's, it's literary art. It's supposed to make you upset. It's supposed to be that way. Right. Like, like you don't burn a book because of it. You just like move on to the next thing. Right. All right. You're yawning. Uh, I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I think we hit our cap. So. Right. <laughs> I'm D of FG Nerd Talk. And I am Justice of Yo Nerd. I like that. We got that on a t-shirt. This is uh this has been Comic Point talking about uh comic book stuff, TV shows. You listen to The Peacemaker and uh the Batman movie that's coming out, which we're both gonna watch and probably have to do a review on. Like we, we, uh, I'm gonna take my notepad with me, write some stuff down. I'm not no, sure how you do things, but that's how I do it. No, I I'm gonna take mental notes. Oh, yeah? They like brain pictures? Yeah? Yeah, I'm going to forget half of them. But I'm going to make the good ones. Hilarious. True nerd fashion, my friend. Until next time, you guys take it easy. (laughs) Take it easy, y'all.